We're going to look at DNA, how we can analyze it, what use it is, and why it is one of the most valuable and exciting discoveries, really, of the last century or so. We're doing some really cutting-edge stuff which very few schools would actually have access to. One of the things that we have, for example, are really top-level scientists coming in to help me make sure that we're doing things as well as possible. We've got Claire, Gareth and John from the National Institute of Medical Research. And in addition, we've got Lucy over there from Imperial College. So we've got some real experts who are giving up their time to come and make sure that you're getting something out of what we're doing together. So we're going to look at a rather horrific murder scene. And we're going to take DNA samples from the murder scene. And we're going to try and find out if we can work out from the DNA, once we've cooked it, whether we can find the culprit. We're also going to get you to look at your own DNA. And I hope what we can do is to extract DNA from your own cells, and you'll be able to see that down the microscope and learn a bit more about what DNA, uh, uh, what, how, what uses and what misuses it could be put to. Maybe one of you could tell us what DNA is. And where, where, where DNA is? I don't know, it's in your body, isn't it? It's in your hair, in your spit and blood. But what, what part of the body is the DNA actually in? Oh, your mouth. Hmm? Your mouth. Yeah, it's certainly in your mouth, it's certainly in your spit. But what, in, what is it in the spit which carries the DNA? Well done, Jenny. That's, you know, I thought you said you didn't like science. Well, you knew the answer, all right? You know, you know a lot. The body is composed of about, what, three billion cells, something like that. A vast number of cells, and virtually all the cells in the body carry DNA. What part of the cell do they have the DNA in? The nucleus. The nucleus, OK, right. So it's the nucleus that we'll be interested in today, the nucleus of the cell, and this is the structure of DNA that Claire's got here in this sort of bead-shaped form. Um, and it's called the double helix because it's kind of a, a sort of a ladder shape that's twirled around like this. And as Professor Winston was saying, it's found in the nucleus of almost all the cells in your body. Let's say we're, we're drawing, we're drawing a, a cell from the body and the, the cell <coughs> works as a result of the, of the control centre, which is the nucleus, OK? And nearly, nearly all our DNA apart from a tiny amount of it, is in the nucleus. There is some DNA scattered around the rest of the cell, which controls how the cell uses energy, but for our input, for our things, it's really quite important. This is really where all your genetic information is, what makes you what you are. That's what carries the messages, and to some extent, will be responsible for the sort of diseases you might develop, cancers that you, you might develop, um, other diseases as well. And so the nucleus is the key thing. And one of the things you have to do with DNA in order to get the DNA out of the nucleus is to actually break the cell up. And there are various techniques for doing that. So what we're all going to now do is um, to get some of our cells, put them on a microscope slide. So I scraped the inside of my left cheek. I plate it out on the... Those are mostly bubbles, but what you can see under low power... Don't forget the bubbles. These are my cells, OK? And they're basically skin cells, but the skin from the inside of my cheek. What you should be able to see is single buccal cells like that. They will have a nucleus in them. You can probably see the nucleus in that cell there. And that's what we're after. That's will con that will contain the DNA. What's right? What's right? Okay. It's a small scraping, and providing it when this is nothing on my stick. I think I need some why do you get it looks wet when you smear it on your probably see something? Yeah, it's more. Yeah, it's more than it. Okay, right, take it away. Oh, I feel a bit stupid. Yeah, it should be there. There's a bubble of spit on there, so I'm sure there's a bubble. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. So you can't see the camera? Right, well, there, there's one of your cells there, right? I've put it at the end of the little needle thing. That's a really good scrape. You've got quite a few of your cells there. If you look there, see, see the big flat scrape, and you can see the nuclei as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's yeah. Like a yeah. Do you know where you put your smear? Yeah, it was somewhere around there. Yeah. You're not quite sure where. 
if you look in the area underneath the bubbles, the little, little pointers, you can see a few cells. You see, they're very faint. They're not, you know, they're not well. So they're very pale, the colours. So. Oh yeah, I can see yeah, that. Yeah, that's, that, that's what that's where your DNA is. Okay. Oh wow. So, so you could do it. <laughs> Right, guys, we're going to go on to the next. Is that yours? Very good scrape. Congratulations, Michael. <laughs> and we're going to go upstairs now to the um, to the crime scene. All right. Crime scene. Yeah. So, do you want a cup of tape then, Connor? Carl. Now, go carefully, all right, don't disturb anything. Now, guys, I want you to tell me where you think you might be able to find DNA which would be useful. Start with the door. Whose, whose blood is it likely to be? Is there anything in the room which might suggest you that there might be another sample of DNA somewhere else? On the car. So, are you on, on the wall? We're going to sample the DNA and put it in a Petri dish. Now, the important thing is that it's got to be labelled. So take some from the couch, a little snippet from the floor. Just scrape the wall. Right, guys, have you got your samples? We'll take the samples downstairs. What we've done is we've taken... DNA samples from the crime scene and the police, it turns out, have two suspects and we think that it's very likely that we'll find DNA from the victim, which we have a record of, and if one of the suspects has DNA which is similar to what we found on the crime screen, then that suspect is much more likely. Now, let's just explain a little bit about how this works. The DNA molecule is quite a large piece of stuff and it has a weight to it. What we're going to do is we're going to put the DNA into a gel and we're going to do a process called electrophoresis. Now, the, the principle is very simple. The principle is that the, the bigger the molecule, the heavier it will be. And so we pass a current, that's where the high voltage electricity comes in, through the DNA on a lump of jelly, which we will be getting you, giving you to load up. It's going to move towards the positive end, just like with any electrical current. And so the heavier the DNA, the slower it will move down the gel. And each of us, you, 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 me, you, all of us, have a slightly different DNA. So we will see different bands for different people. But the victim will have a certain DNA pattern, the innocent person will have another DNA pattern, and the hope is that the suspect that we've got, we've got two suspects, one of them will be able to show has actually visited the crime scene. So he then becomes the prime suspect, and we can decide whether or not his alibi is right. None of I say, do twins have the same DNA? Twins have the same DNA, but they're not identical, absolutely, because they have different fingerprints. Twins are an interesting example of where DNA analysis is not necessarily going to be helpful. So what we've done, you see, is to have samples of DNA from the crime scene. So what you'll be doing is taking these samples and running the gel to see their molecular weights, see where the bands are. OK, so what we've done is we've coloured the DNA blue, so you're going to be able to see it, because if we just had a clear liquid, it's going to be difficult for you to see. So what you're going to do is using a pipette, OK, which you see before on CSI and things, yeah? Oh, yes. So you're going to transfer some of this liquid from here into here. But you're going to transfer a really small amount. So you're going to transfer 10 microliters. What? So a microliter is one thousandth of a milliliter. OK? What? So we're talking about really small Tiny. quantities, which is why you've got to use this and not the kind of pipettes you might have used before. OK, so what you do is you stab your pet into there and it will automatically pick up a tip okay if you push the button on top till you just feel resistance 
put it in the liquid and release the button on top, it takes up the liquid automatically. The big challenge now is for you guys to have a really steady hand because if you can sort of look over the top of here, you'll see there's kind of a row of dashes. And what they are is I've got a slab of jelly sitting in here and the dashes are holes in the jelly. And you've got to get your 10 microliters of DNA into, into one yeah. of those holes. We're going to give you the samples labelled C, which is the one from the crime scene, and the samples labelled A and B, which are from the two suspects. And you then load those into your gel, and then we're going to turn the current on. And as Professor Winston said, the DNA will move out and give you different patterns for different people. Hey, look, and one you should be able to work out who did the crime. Release. Take them off. Okay. Now choose a hole. Steady arm, darling. Steady arm. Okay, and then just push. Keep pushing until it's all gone out. So what's going to happen when we put the electricity through it is that because the DNA is negatively charged, it's going to move towards this end. Okay. So what's happening now is the current is flowing through the gel. Okay. And it's going to pick up the DNA. The stuff that's really big isn't going to be able to move very far, so it's only going to get a little way. The stuff that's really small is going to be able to move a long way. Right, stand back, let her get some light. Yeah, give me some air, guys. It is. That ain't in the right place. Which we need to do? I'll soon find out. That's done it. It's the periodic table. Oh, I love that one. Do you know that? Um, I don't know that. Yes, one. you do. How's it? Right. Um, Everyone got it? The body's made of it. Carbon dioxide, nitrogen, oxygen, and the oil. Yeah. Right. Are we ready? I'll tell you, I'm really bad at loading gels. I once said to one of my um, researchers in my lab, I'm going to come back and do some more work in the lab, and she said, look, please don't do that, because you'll mess up all the gels. Do you like being called Lord or not? Can you see yeah, you must love it. Lord yeah. Robert so Winston. Is that like no, a piece of pear? That's great, man. I'm pleased we've got a teacher like you, because you're, like, amazing. Just thinking you'd be able to go to Parliament or... Even though I don't like science, yeah? I hate, like, literally, I hate right, science at school. Mm. So I didn't... I weren't in... I wasn't allowed in my science lessons for, like... Like... Like a year, year and a half, so... I don't understand it, like, That's because I felt it, because I didn't understand it. And then I'll come in here and I'll do a different frame of mind sort of thing, like, giving it yeah. another chance. Because I've just had really shit teachers who start at school, but you ain't exactly a shit teacher. Is that right? You're good okay. at it. If you want to lift the lid off, so I'll hold the bottom so it doesn't splash everywhere. That's it. Now, this is really interesting. Keep, keep it level. level. Keep it level. Oh, that's, that's cats. Good man. Yeah. Terrific. Perfect. Now come and follow it down. We'll have a look at it on the on the UV illuminator. Now Jenny, I want you to tell me who the innocent person is from this gel. How am I meant to know? Because there were two DNA samples <laughs> at the crime scene. Right. We think one's a murderer, yeah. and one's a victim. Right. So I want you to tell me, looking at the gels, who the innocent person is. How Simply I'm working it out. <laughs> Is the innocent person the one with all the <laughs> yes. all of it? Yes. Good girl. Oh, okay. Because, because. Why is that though? Because, because those two have got the same DNA. So that's one person. Uh, yeah. So it's one, one, one attack yeah. and one victim. Yeah. 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 Okay. Mm. Cool, man. Is that how they find out in the police? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that how they do it? Well, there, there are lots of different techniques, but this is the basic technique that they will use. That's cool, man. Do you want a photograph of it? Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, we can, show, we can show that to the judge. It weren't me. I can prove. <laughs> That's it. Thank you. See you later on. Bye, Craig. See you later. Thank you.